Hey guys, this is Judah here. So I'm an active member on the Discord community. I've seen a lot of questions regarding you know, who to train, uh, get three stars to start out with, and things for Guardian Tales. So up today, I'd just like to make a tier list that kind of encompass the PvP aspects, which includes Coliseum and Arena, and also the PvE contents. Um, for, uh, which is mostly just chapters, but at the end it will get into Comma Zone and uh, Tower and Orbital, all the towers, Orbital and uh, Heaven Hode and just regular Tower. And uh, that is also a kind of important way to gain resources at the end. So uh, the PVE heroes are kind of important, but the ones on top of this list will definitely be ones who will excel in both and you can use in both. So currently what I have here is I just put all the S, uh, A one stars are here. So these are practically worthless. Although I put S as hyper just because I like him so much. But uh, I'll primarily go for the three stars because um, your three star maxing is probably very important in this game, uh, especially with the new future training room. With the training room, you you have to have a certain amount of three stars that are max limit break which requires 700 crystals for each, uh, and Max Awakening, which uh, requires a ton of Awakening resources and to unlock an extra slot. And if you do um, unlock it, it will give you a maxed out character. So that would be very important and good to have. So three-star maxing will probably be much more important in this game coming along, especially since there's three slots. So uh, I'm predicting that maybe the second slot required like three more of those or two more of those that requires you to max. So you would want to just get started. And, but look, as I said, even with, uh, even if you're buying stamina each day, uh, maxing out a character is very hard and tough. So it's probably good to know. And so I'll, I'll rate them. Uh, let's see here. I'll first do like a middle line, like A tier. So this is like the person that um, is all right, all around for both content. And <laughs> I might just pick advice over here in the middle. So she really excels. Hmm, I might have to say this, but um, I'm gonna base some on weapons. A lot of them need the weapons. I may try to say like, if she doesn't have her weapon, she would drop down to B tier or even lower. She needs her weapon because a weapon is a, uh, a 10 seconds uh, cooldown and everyone who's standing in the circle after the shot will get healed. So that is very important for PvE. So she can solo a lot of content, even with the AI being very terrible and would die in your teammates. So she is good in that aspect. She also has some sort of reach and range in Arena due to the fact of how her attack pattern is. So she is able to chase a little bit as a tank. But other than that, and especially since there are still a ton of people with Marina in Arena, uh, she is just kind of okay in Arena and not that much to say. And for Coliseum wise, um, she's all right as well, but since her ability, party ability is a fire attack plus, she needs to be in fire team and currently fire teams, although there are some great characters um, are very lacking and to make a full team to counter the meta currently. So she's just like the middle of the road character for now. Next up, it would be Arabella. Arabella is hard to say. She is a really glass cannon, but she excels in Carlson. Also, she needs her weapon. I cannot state enough. She needs her weapon. Otherwise, uh, her attack pattern is pretty bad with other gun weapons. Uh, and she's losing a lot of uh, DPS. So for that, I'll rate her. She's probably, she probably is actually an S with her weapon, um, although she's a glass cannon and with the inclusion of characters such as Future Princess, she is weak to the meta. Uh, but she does kill Naris, <laughs> which can be good because she uh, Nari is the character that's just SS tier right now. So there we go. And if you are able to dodge well, she is very good in PvE contact as well. 
Uh, you don't really depend on her for Kama Zone. You could, but you need to get some defense, defensive characters to buff her. And her party buff herself is kind of selfish as it's a dark type up. So not useful for some of the other party as long as you're ruining dark, although dark has good synergy currently with other characters. What they currently have. Mm, next character, uh, Bari. So Bari is SS tier, but this SS tier comes with, like I said, she needs her weapon. She is one of the heroes that badly needs her weapon. Um, her weapon has a 40% chance to, so she is like a cannon that takes like six seconds to load one shot. The attack is great. Um, it, it's a big AOE, it does great damage, but the load time is so long. So, and during that, she doesn't run, she walks really slowly. So she really needs her weapon, which has a 40% chance to like, um, is, uh, have had that, so like a three second, two second uh, normal attack which allows her to get much more DPS than she is. Otherwise, she would even be lower than Arabella with her weapon. So she would probably be like a low ass, in my opinion, if she does not have her weapon. One of the other things is she also desperately needs a five star, which is a 30% increase after she loads. And that lasts for five seconds. If you don't have those two, she would be kind of underwhelming to say. And uh, if you're hearing a lot of other people talk about how good she is, um, um, you'll probably be disappointed because she is kind of hard to play. You do have to watch out for some attacks in PVE, especially when you're in lower level, because she needs her also needs her masculine break to get her her bulk up a bit. So there's a it's she is like a final unit, although she is very good. She needs a lot of things to go, but it might be possible if you got lucky with getting her weapon, like through the boxes from metal or just from draws from your starting draws. Then she would be absolutely like the character you start out with. She is definitely SS2. Uh, next one, Bianca. I would rate her as probably an S tier as well. Um, she provides a great party hit crit buff, and that's pretty important. So she had also she has good water synergy with um, Marinia and uh, the future character already in the Korean server Garb. But um, she does uh, she's also the queen of Kamazo due to the fact that her her if you get her weapon of course i'm saying this but if you get her weapon her the cooldown is a five second skill and since a lot of the mobs you're able to um, use one skill to to freeze them or to status them um she is like good and also she, it's a very long it's a wide just a sword slash so um in a long line so if you have that it will actually attack the back so you get a lot more stun out of that then some of the other characters is pretty fast of course the backdrop is um drawback is she her ai is terrible because even with like without a sword she would be like b even with the crit buff again but without the sword she gets even less range although her she's a charge up and she gets less range and so she, her ai will just constantly try to go and attack but she has no bow to actually uh, sustain that and so it would just get her killed easily so her AI is pretty bad and man I'd probably put her in A because actually thinking back because there's also a big part of raid and she doesn't do well in raids because like I said although Kamazone she does great for raid uh, the, it, the percentage of her status is way too low so she, she, or she's probably women but she's much worse than other things. That's her. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, it's different. Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, she got no ability of vape due to PVE wise. Oh no, like pure PVE wise for um for just chapter running. If you get her sword, she has a blood suck ability. So. It's no worries about that, but without her sword, 
she's a bit lacking. But even with her sword, considering like some of the high-end contact later on, she is not as great as you would hope for. But don't don't get me wrong. All the characters in AI, I still believe, are pretty usable and pretty good to be that. It's just that it's a very heavy investment for some of these. So it might not be your first in choice for this one. Let's see if I can find the next three star here. Ah, Ido. Ido is hard to say. Like, on her own, she would be in a B tier, to be honest. There's so many things that goes against her. Even, um, so first, she definitely need, is one of the characters that needs to be five star and her weapon to actually work because those contain so much so much of her skill it contains a heal it contains the event fuck it contains um attacks so she would not work it out also another thing is she has a basic party buff so that is kind of a limiting factor for her as well so you you do need those very good basic Characters to work, which the only one right now is Nari over here, sitting over here. So, I already heard B. Yeah, she 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 can't perform well in arena, but all even uh, with her weapon. But like her party buff, if you don't have Nari, it doesn't work as well. And I'm not going to consider synergy that much. So, if she's going to be, so she's not really a higher priority until you. Or later on, I want to build a basic team. So she goes into like B tier. And even with her highest strength, he is, she is, she is all right. She, even with her highest, she goes to an A, uh, high A or low S. But currently, as just considering her, she is a, a B. Next character is Lon. Lon would actually be an A as well. Uh, with her weapon. Her weapon gives her a boost in attack. Bad thing about in PvE. She 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 uh is her attacks her normal attacks do not go through walls. So in PvE if, if your attacks don't really you don't have any like way to go for walls, it's hard to actually <laughs> do anything in PvE. So she is kind of lacking that. Although her weapon does boost her damage a bit and she does come with a heal, so um, that is somewhat sustainable, but the heals in PvE are somewhat really weak because uh, the uh, I'm sorry PvP because they keep on increasing your HP pool and the heal does not increase with it, so it's not as great as you think it would be. Her buff is universal though, so that's pretty good. It's a forty percent HP buff. But she doesn't really have much else going for her other than her weapon has a good tracking for that and a kind of big AoE. So she would be all right in PvE, but for PvP, she is not that great. She's just on the all right point for that. Um, next, oh, I miss Eugene. Eugene, I actually put, it might be controversial, probably put her in SS. She is great in arena with her weapon. Her weapon. With the connection we have in global, will just allow you to almost just have like a 100% chance of chaining and two or three times, and like with no with so much ease. And since she has a short cooldown, that's great. It pretty much means you're going to get her chain skill off, and her chain skill is a 500%, which is I think the highest uh, highest amount of damage you do. So like if you can get that off, it's good. Her Buff is a melee attack buff, although it's limiting. Um, it's very needed for some of the characters to work, I believe. Some of the characters like Vish um, and Algmont to do a bit of damage. Algmont doesn't really need her, but it's really great to have. But Vish really needs her for to actually be able to trade well in Arena. And tanks always benefit from that, or melee characters always benefit from that. So I rate her pretty highly for that. Uh, she does need her five star though, to be honest, because um, that one will give her much more needed speed and events for range and speed from chasing. Otherwise, it's 
she's kind of lacking in PvP, but she does good in the arena. Uh, I mean, sorry, in PvE content. She's probably not good in Coliseum because AIs are terrible, melee especially, and her attack is way too wide in Coliseum, so you would probably use her as a lead. And an all melee one would be very terrible in Coliseum, to be honest. You'll just get everyone attacking one person, and then the AoEs will take all of your characters out at once and state just them as once. But I do still put her as a uh, S S because of how good she is in PvP and she is all right in PvE wise. Next character would be Lapis. So she recently did get a buff in KR, but I would say she's B. She would probably be the lowest character on my list. Um, her buff is not universal, it's a light, although with the release of her Tremendous, that makes her good. It's uh, her attack range is very to be sorry, it's only in a straight line, so it's hard to catch up at any people are turned around with her attack. And she requires you to constantly be pressing the attack button to increase her uh, range and attack power that's her ability. But with how she works, she can only go in one direction and she can't go horizontally. It's pretty bad um, to actually use that ability. And her uh, exclusive weapon ability requires the person to be standing in front of you, as always, which is really hard to do. Otherwise, you're not going to get the chain off them. So she's really low on my list. And she doesn't sell in any content, to be honest. Although the light, the labyrinth is here. so she, She's useful for that as a maze. But uh, with the training room, you could, if you get Thrifter's Princess or even a two star character like um, Sohi, uh, you're good to go for that content currently. So she's not really important and definitely don't invest Awakening Stones and Hero Crystals and Evolution Stones into her. You really need those resources for other work. She wouldn't help improve you as much. So she's pretty, she's really well noticed. Okay, next character is Lupinia. Here's the problem with Lupinia. I'll probably put her in A, but she's pretty low on A. She has a crit buff. I, I believe all crit buff heroes are good. It's good synergy with a lot of characters because they do big damage and one crit would just make them off the charts uh, for sh and shorten the battle immensely. The problem with her is her attacks are easily dodgeable. It's kind of slow, her wolf attacks, um, if you're not triggering her weapon skill. Uh, I mean, sorry, the weapon ability where she uh, gets three wolves. It's it's very, it's slow. Uh, you can see the range. Let, let's say this. Um, from It's it's like the devil, um, the archfiend devil from chapter seven, her, his claw attack. It's very projected. So, Anyone can dodge that. And sometimes you can't even hit the moss with that if they're not big enough. So it's, it's pretty bad. Also, another thing, kind of with some of these dark characters like Arabella, she is so squishy. She is so squishy. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's probably why she's a crit character, but yeah, she is hard to survive in anything. So, well, so even if her party, it's mostly for a crit buff for PvP was and for PvE. If you're not bulky, it's hard to kind of use you. Even the only thing is, as a melee, can, she's this probably has the one with the most range, and she can kind of kite, but she doesn't excel in much, I believe, to batter her in S tier and SS tier. She her damage is not as impressive as there though, so she can't even really glass him, and she's not tanky. So the only thing she has for her going is really her buff. She's in this zone I call not tanky enough and not offensive enough. So she's really stuck in this middle thing. Mm. And on to the next character, Marinia. Uh, this is definitely an SS tier. Uh, people probably are debating if if it's good or not to invest in her with the inclusion of so many good tanks currently, uh, Algamba and Future Princess. But I say um, still invest in her. Um, she's very vital. Her chain skill will give you shield which is great protection uh, for both comma zone, PVP, PVE. Um, one problem with PVE is her attack is very hard to land with the connection global. 
or very easy, depending on where you are. It's really complicated how it works, but uh, it's since it's like one that follows her and it's very easy to cancel out of. So it's hard to use her, but if you have that good connection and can use her well, she is a monster because that shield carries over from battle to battle. So as a starter, she's really good. She can sort of go toe to toe with Marinia. If the Mari, I'm uh, sorry, the Mari player, if the Mari player is kind of bad and doesn't know to run, or if you're able to dodge her uh, skills well, it really depends on connection. In my opinion. So PvP is, while it's important, I don't, it's hard to rate them because global is sort of different from KR. There's a lot of connection issues bugging it. So even if in scenario like this character is going to be OP and great, there is always hunches. SS for some characters. So she is still SS. She can tank really well. She does have enough attack. So as a person starting out, you could use her to start out with. As like you don't want to go for pure tanks because pure tanks um, don't have enough damage and a lot of the um, levels like in rift zones are time limited and that would, that uh, ties into how much reward you get so dps would probably be the way to go and tank would be secondary so even with that she has enough attack to actually be wired enough to actually train first so she's also a minus is too great as a beginner great in all contents she's very versatile although people are saying to reset her for future punches i don't believe it's to that range yet you could just use training room for future punches. Marina still serves a very good purpose. And especially, it probably is because like there are no fire meta right now because of Marina. So people are not fearing as much. But she's, she's I would just say she's good. And you should definitely just keep her and not, not, not reset her. I would say reset characters would probably be characters in the B range and some in the A um, because it's just a long time to work with them. And if they still have enough use, I don't believe like and like you only have one currently, even in the character server, there's only one. So it's best to save for if you got a character wrong or you're doing a total uh, last piece for your team, that kind of thing to actually use that. It's too rare to actually waste on just setting a really good character to just get a character that's not gonna boost you as much. Okay, next three star character would be. Ah, uh, Nari. Uh, hey, Nari. <laughs> to be honest, <sighs> she she's on. She she's too on. Uh, I, I don't like to admit this. I really hate her, but she is way too good. Um, I don't know what the developers thinking. First of all. She doesn't need her five star skills. Her five star skills are purely defensive, and it's only for defense buff for range. So that is not as useful as you would believe, because there's also a lot of melee characters, and you can just they just ignore that buff. So that five star buff is not your priority. So she, which means she's really good at four star already, and she doesn't need her weapon. The weapon will allow her to do more rulers, but do more damage and. Uh, makes you consistently have consistently have defense down, but uh, even with the uh, defense down she gets from blue orb from uh, depleting her uh, rifle uh, magazine amount, it's still enough to do a decent amount of damage since her attack is auto tracking, goes through walls, and fast enough, and her recharge is not slow as well. So she's just a beast all around. She is good as a beast buffer. So uh, and PVE. E content, she's good against boss, and for you to do more damage against them, her she herself is a very big damage dealer. She also has a range boost for attack, so as her party buff, so that allows your range to just do even more damage as you wish. So she's paired up mostly with Barry for arena because it's just crazy how much attack powers she boosts both of you guys. And all around, she's pretty solid. Uh, even she has actually a faster speed when shooting than Bari when she's shooting. So she's always able to catch up against a lot of these range characters. And she can kind of kite all these tank characters. So she's good. Her or one downside would probably be her EX skill is kind of prone to missing and easy to dodge. 
uh, because it's it's kind of slow startup and um, it's 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 tracking, but it's a slower tracking than her attack, so it's more likely to miss. But even with that, you can just um, just wait for them to get uh, to see you chipping at their HP, and they will actually most of the time charge at you, and you can get them that way for PvP. Let's see. On to the next character is Ogma. Ogma is a really strange character. He is purely based on a lot of things. I'd put her Hamai, but that's like, this is his final capability. Like He would be in probably S or high A if without all the things. He needs a good weapon. He needs a good shield. I mean, the good weapon means he needs his EX weapon. He needs a good shield, and he needs his five star, and he probably needs his max limit break. So he needs all these things to be an SS tier, which is more than that. And also, even she, he's a pure tank, so his attack is not high. So she is probably not the person to start up with, but she's probably like, like the kind of end game character you would want for a lot of content because it boosts the whole team a lot. But it's hard to say if someone's going to park when you're going to finish him. I do have him. I do like him. But it's hard to say if you're just training him. He He's probably like your least priority one out of the SS characters to train, in my opinion. But um, uh, he uh, his weapon has a reflector based which reflects based on the fence. And so what you want to do most of the time is wait for wait for like Bari, who has a, a high just one time attack. And you would put up your defense up and then she would hit and bang, you would deflect a lot of HP on her. And the other thing is a uh, five star she provides a buff, which is 50% of his HP, uh, his defense to other characters who has lower defense than him, which really helps these ranged characters be a bit more bulky and able to trade both with their counterpart or other ranged characters. And that way you get the upper hand in PvP. And she, I, I do say he's pretty vital in PvP because your AIs are so stupid. They would they would take a lot of unnecessary damage and that defense boosts uh, party buff defense and his five star ability defense really helps them to be able to survive. So you would actually be able to chain and get some heals or chain and get some stages. And it's just all around good. The only thing that's not good about him is probably his attack. But I can't really say much else because he's not even meant to be a tanking character. I think that's going to be the last SS on my list, though. The other person, yeah, not the three stories. Oh, never mind. There's also uh, Future Princess, which is an SS. Um, there is no, there's no label of him right now. Oh, her right now, sorry. So, uh, but she is assets due mostly to the fact that um, her chain skill is really good. It's um, for PvP, uh, not really PvP, for, for PvE, as it's a three attack negation for your characters. It does no damage, but it heals 20% and it gives three attack negations to all your party members. And like I said, your teammates are stupid, so you pretty much want that. So they don't actually just get one shot by... Uh, by their boss's uh, super moves. And she she has a 2% heal with her weapon and she does a ton of, she does a decent amount of damage. And, but she's really tanky and she heals and she's quick. There is a, like a range and shield mode for her, but you mostly would use shield because the shield also provides a good buff. And the range, I tried it. It doesn't really increase her attack. So she still has the same 20 attack. <clears throat> the only thing that you have is you get a bit more AoE on your attacks. So it's it's not that great of a trade-off if you're considering you're losing a lot of defense from the shield and special abilities. And uh, the the range attacks is slower than the melee attacks. And she needs her melee attacks to actually to actually charge up her speed because she gets consecutive speeds constantly if you are able to keep on hitting the enemy. The other thing is probably just the range. 
But even with that, the melee attack has some sort of range into it. After her four or five normal combo, the, the end of that is a melee, uh, is a is a range shot. So it might be enough. Probably not, but if you need some range damage for that. Um, uh, to Tinia. I still read an S. Um, she has for PVE. She has a uh, Desert Arrow which uh, has a defense debuff, and defense debuffs are always great against bosses and mobs. She has a very fast attack speed, and she, if you're controlling her, she, you can just run around and attack and just kite everyone. It's it's great. The problem with PvP is probably now, again, mostly it's against Bari or Nari. She can't out-damage those two. But she, those two do way much more damage than her, so she can't trade with them. Which is why she is starting to, uh, she start starting to fade out of PvP, but she's still really good as S tier character, uh, and some melees would get her as well. But she's still able to uh, most likely be Marinia if you're if you know how to play her, and um, and with connection issues, uh, the connection I don't want to really repeat this, but global connection is terrible. But with connection issues, like. She can be in your face and constantly attacking normals. It's really powerful and can shave off your HP pretty quickly. So that's why she's still S. She's she's still uh, above average in PvP and she excels in PvE pretty well, especially in Coliseum. You see a lot of them, although she's fading out because of characters like Mia, who offers more to your team than her, because she is a range buff. So <clears throat> and that is not as worth it because Coliseum. Man, uh, you run two tanks mostly in two me a uh, two range, so it would probably be better to have more universal buffs than hers. Fish is in a um, I think I mentioned this before, but she's a character that needs um, she's that Eugene to really function in PvP uh, because other than being a Bari and Tinia Earth Killers, she. She doesn't have much going for her in PvP other than that, if you don't have Eugene. Because then she falls into category where she doesn't do enough damage to trade anyone. And she isn't taking enough to actually stall them out for her <clears throat> to get her uh, chain and skill moves up enough to defeat them. So she's 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 an A. She's pretty good. She she's above uh, I don't want to actually say she's she's alright, but she's nothing special about. She does have an HP buff, but there's a lot of it. Um, you don't need that much HP buffers. You, most people just have a Marina. That's enough HP buff, personally. She probably she's pretty alright in PVE, but the fact is her normal attacks are kind of slow, so she's susceptible to people actually interrupting her. Uh, and her three hit for her skill is also kind of slow, so she can be hit out of that. She she can be. Uh, she could die before she actually finishes you know, this and get the stature song. So it's kind of weird. Her teleport is good, um, MPV, PVP, but she could get caught very easily, especially with connection issues. She she just goes in the corner and it's hard to get out of that. It would just be taking damage out. Uh, and for PVE, it's good if you're controlling her, but the AI controls her, she would just rush into mobs. And get herself killed before you can do anything and try to save her. So she's a mixed bag. She's like she can be good. She can be. She can also be awful. There's just like she excels in some parts, but she there's too many bad parts to actually put her in. So she's not well rounded enough, in my opinion, and excel enough in one area to require anything to ask and ss. This character is Elf. Elf is B. He is. I don't know how they made this. She, he, he, he's able to get a constant forty percent um, defense buff, which, which sounds good on paper. But I don't know, like the stats, the just the stats. He's not able to take enough to even with the forty percent. He's not able to take enough. And then his downside is his attacks are super slow, so it's easily dodgeable. Even with the range she has, it, it's not enough. The range for his um, his uh, skill. His weapon skills enough, but his normals is it's not enough to outweigh 
outweigh the negatives. Uh, and he's also slow in movement. And then the other thing is, the other thing is, uh, his party buff is a uh, range buff. So, uh, rate, I mean, range defense buff. So, in, uh, in practice, it was supposed to start the PvP meta, but it's it's just not useful enough to stop them because no one really runs a pure um, a range setup. It's going to be range and tank. So, you stop one, but your buff is not universal enough to stop the other two or one character, and that will lose off to universal buffs or buffs that just buff two of two your characters. So it's just not as good, it's not as versatile. So if he goes in the boom, uh, and he also, uh, so he's, he, he's kind of, he's just in there as well. He's in the strange zone with uh, Vish, but she, he doesn't have a lot of positives, enough positives compared to Vish. So she's in the B2. And the final one is uh, Mia. He's, she, she is the third, the first um, three star healer. She is really good and she makes, she's definitely three star material as a healer. She has enough ways to heal the party consistently, including her skill. If you get her weapon, her normals will have a chance to heal. And and her just the healing off she has. She has, uh, I believe, nine or 12 shots of that. And it's single, so it's like Alba. And it's really pinpointed, so you're able to just consistently heal your tanks. And her damage is not as shabby. It's, it's not shabby. It's all right. So she does have that. And her, her skill is universal. It's 80% skill. Uh, so she's all around pretty good. And as a healer, so she she's an S tier because heroes are pretty unique as a as someone you want to max as a three star. Since two star healers, you don't really want to spend that uh, hero crystals going a uh, max number break due to the fact, especially with training room right now, it's hard to pinpoint the value of two star. There's like really good two stars, but to compete with three star, you do need to have MLB, but it's hard to say if it's worth 350 crystals compared to just doing three stars because I feel like. Uh, Growing Tales is moving more three star focus as the developers are trying to get you to pull on these characters. There's a lot of benefits of you having three stars compared to having two stars, but there are really usable two stars. And I'll, I'll probably just uh, list some really good two stars that you should always have. Um, it's just going to be a quick round down. I believe a lot of people already done that. But Craig. Chica healers, uh, these two healers are good. These two stars are so bad, I'm, I'm just going to label her here. I just really want to say how bad she is. Hikate is all right, and she has a good buff. I should put her pretty high. Um, her roof attack is pretty good, especially since you can get that. It's very fast to make it routine with those perfect people. I would put her here. She is she is pretty good at tanking. Not much else though. Oh, also mentioned is probably um, let's see her is the Red Riding Hood. Is this one? Then yeah, no, that's the dragon. But Red Riding Hood is the probably the last one I say is pretty good for your team because if you are good with her there are strats for you to be able to uh, to um to uh, use one skill to fully stun a boss you could probably look up videos of that but that's like her really good part of her but you do need her um, weapon for that to have and i guess that's it for my tier list <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of really bland and it kind of just tells you like which characters you probably want to train and like somewhat a lot of these really require uh weapons sadly to have their full potentials uh i would say nor of these ss tier it's nori and 
a marina that don't require as much. Also, um, Eugene. And other than that, yeah, this she doesn't probably require her weapon, but that's mostly because she is mostly just a crit buffer. And this, because I don't know what he does. Because he he's too bad to actually want to invest in it. And that's pretty much it, the ones that don't need a weapon. The ones that don't need 5-star are Nari, actually. Uh, she, she, Marina really needs her 40% uh, buff from her chains. Uh, from her um, her anchors. Otherwise, she's not going to be as tanky as people want you to believe. She won't even qualify as a tank without the 40% buff. And I think that's the only one that doesn't need her, her five star really. Other ones really do need their five star to be actually be kind of competitive. I'm not sure about like these two characters and plot vice, but it's mostly because they're they're so bad I haven't invested that much into them. Okay, but yeah, this is my tier list for now. I just want to sh share with you guys because I just. Because uh, there's been a lot of arguments on who's good and who's bad, and I just want uh, to talk my share of this and how people are still not acknowledging Nari is like the best character for PvP and still trying to defend her and say she's not brain dead. She is pretty brain dead, but th that's pretty much one reason for my time. I hope you guys like this video, and I might talk more about like two stars and especially when you're starting out the game because you're probably not going to get as many three stars. You'll probably start investing in one three star and the rest will be two stars. So it's pretty, pretty important to get your comp ready and know what to get, know what to buy because a lot of things are on time and you want those quickly. Okay. Oh, see you guys later then.